One of the questions that I get all the time is, Raul, what would you say to the younger version of yourself? If you go back in time, what's the number one advice that you give yourself when you started your business? And I always tell them, double down in your sales skills. The reason that most entrepreneurs are struggling right now with a product is because they don't know how to sell their product and services. Somehow we get stuck in our mind because we feel like sales is something that is like a dirty word. It's like, you know, certain skills that it takes to sell, but you could always learn how to be a great influencer and become a closer. In this video, I'm gonna show you how and what needs to happen for you to become a closer. This is the Raul Velasquez experience. Learn what it takes to go to the next level. So I said that with my partner, Juan Carlos Garcia, and we've been doing real estate for the past 18 years. I mean, he's been in the game for the past 30 years. He's one of the greatest salespeople I know in my life. I mean, this guy's an influencer, and he told me everything I know about sales. So what I decided to do is create a video series to help you become a closer. We call it Fridays Are For Closers. So in this part, you're gonna find out what's the psychology of a closer, what needs to happen for you to become a closer. Next time we release the other two videos, but at least you have the framework of what needs to happen for you to become a closer, not just a salesperson, but a closer. Enjoy. So today we're gonna to talk about what does it take to become a closer? Ron what do you think it takes to become a closer, man? Because I think there's a misconception, right? That closers are born. You think closers are born or closers are made? What do you think? Closers are made. Nobody born with no knowledge of anything. You are made. Training is what it takes to become a closer. A lot of training, it's constant training. So what I'm seeing in the market a lot, in, especially in sales, is that everybody says that you need to hard close, everybody says that you need to be a hard closer, or you have to have this kind of killer mentality. Uh, I, and I've come across multiple different salespeople or different sales strategies. What is it that you think makes the closer versus the guy who, who's kind of the, the, the guy who just is the kind of the waiter, right? Like taking yeah. orders. Because there's, especially in real estate, right? There's the order takers yes. and they are the closers. That's what right. makes the difference between the order takers that are just taking orders saying, hey, you want to buy this? I'll take the order. There's the guys who are using their skills to close. I tell you one word, listening. The art of listening makes the difference between an order taker and a closer. The closer listens more than talks ask questions, ask key element questions that will guide him through uh, the way he's going to make the best value proposition to his client. The other take is talk, talk, and talk, mm. but don't listen. And I think, I mean, you and I, we love to talk. I mean, oh, that's yeah. why we have a, a podcast, right? We love, to, we love to talk, so there's no shortage of, of, of energy of talking here. That's right. So, like, how do you train yourself not to talk? Because I know, man, when you and I have gone out together, have dinner, man, we just talk, talk. Our wives are like, please, shut up, let us talk. <laughs> you and I will just talk the entire dinner. So how do you train yourself in your mind? And how do, like, how do you, as a sales guy, train yourself to just shut up and listen? Well, it's very interesting because, yes, we human beings have the tendency to always open our mouth because we want to show how much we know, how much we have learned throughout time. I think that it takes a little bit of training in terms of adapting to the whole idea of when you speak to a client, first you ask questions. I think that the talk can be done through questioning mm. because then you get the answers and then you listen to the answers. And that's how you kind of evolve into the value proposition. So I did a little experiment uh, about a year ago with my salespeople, right? Yeah. I, I recorded uh, their conversations with clients yes. and I uploaded, I, I don't know, I don't remember the, the website, but it's a way to upload the the WAV file mm -hmm. and to see, like visually see, like how much my sales guy talk versus how much the client talk, right? Right. And I was able to see that the conversations that led to a sale, always 80% of the conversation was done by the client. Boom. And 20% of the conversation was done by the salesperson. That's right. So I'm, there's data, and I'm sure I'm not the only guy. I'm sure there's many people who have done like more even in-depth research about this, that the less you talk, especially in sales, man, like people don't, I have understand the value of being a good listener. I gotta tell you, it applies to any product we sell. The more you talk as the salesperson, the less likely is that you are going to get the deal done, okay? If 80% of the time the buyer talks and the 20% that you talk is questions, hmm. and then questions. you listen 80% of the time, you got a deal. I think that's, that's what separates the closers from uh, the order takers. Definitely. The questions that they ask. 
Definitely. The questions they ask. Because it's, not about, it's, all, it's also not about being quiet. I don't want people to, to listen to this and think, okay, I need to be quiet and let the other person. You need to engage. That's right. So I think that you have to ask the right questions. And when it's dead space, like a strategic, <laughs> questions. strategic questions, you have to ask the right questions. I mean, the, the, the art of sales, man, I'm always fascinated about the art of sales. And there's if one good book that I recommend our listeners to, to get is the, um, uh, the book, what's the name of that book? I always talk about it is escapes me. What's the name of that book that I always talk about? Pitch anything. Pitch anything. Yeah. Pitch anything. I read it. So if that book right there talks about the art of going back into the subconscious primal mind. Correct. To make sure that the client or the customer feels at ease. I mean, Pitch Anything is a, a brilliant book. A Not brilliant only that, book. Pitch Anything teaches us that presentations don't need to be long. Presentations, the shorter they are, the better and more effective because they expand of attention by anybody. It's very short. Some people have capacity to listen to you for 20 minutes. Some people have capacity to listen to you for an hour. But the longer you make, the less chances you have to be effective and to be able to close that sale. A confused mind never makes a decision. That's right. A confused mind. I think sometimes as salespeople, we think that, like, let me, let me give them all the qualities, all the information, all the bells. Like, every time Only somebody's trying need. to sell me something, I'm, I'm, I'm purchasing a, a, a service. I'm in the market for a service for a CRM, right? Right. And if they block an hour of my time, first, first of all, I don't have an hour. Like That's if right. you're trying to sell to a busy entrepreneur, or a busy CEO, they don't have time. 15 minutes 15 to 20 minute minutes. meetings is the most that we could spare a day to be able to make a decision. If you can't sell me in first in the first five minutes, you lost me. That's right. So if you can position your product, like the best qualities, and the, you know, the list, listen, listen to what the client wants, and then position your product to, in the first five minutes to solve their needs. That's correct. And then ask questions. That's like, correct. what's it going to cost you if you don't use this? That's what's right. costing you if you don't buy this? Like, what's the downfall if you don't find something like this? Then I start, it, it get, it's those are buying questions. They ask me, they, they start to go into my brain and, and ask myself those questions. Like, hey, maybe I need this. That's right. So you have to become a good listener. You have to ask the right questions. Correct. What's another thing that separates closers from order takers? Well, I, I got to tell you, a good quality training and the problem is that most bureaucrats firms are dead wrong in the way they train people. Unfortunately, that's the case, okay? I mean, I, I've been in the business many, many years and I've been dealing with many different companies. And, and, and unfortunately, for the most part, they delegate training to third parties. They delegate training to people who probably was in the real estate business as active agents for years and then they became trainers. I gotta tell you, every transaction is different. Just like every person is different genetically, every transaction is different and real estate and closing in real estate is a constant learning experience for all your life. Mm. So the way that I like to train my people, okay, is by show and tell. I mean, it's very easy to go to yeah. the whiteboard. It's very easy to put a training program on, on, on the computer. But show and tell will give them a real feedback of how and why and, 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 and where you do closings. I think that, that's the key for any set closer that they need to continue to sharpen their skills. Correct. I think the, the order taker is the one that doesn't care about how good his skills are. The order taker is just waiting for the orders to come to him. The closer is the one that says, okay, I need to sharpen my skills. That's I need right. to sharpen my listening skills. I need to sharpen my communication skills. I need to sharpen my acts because that way I could serve the clients better. That's right. And I think that you're right, man. Not just in the real estate game, in many industries, the sales training is done by people who haven't sold anything but sold you into buying into their sales training. I mean, I That's guess correct. I guess that qualifies as a sale because that is a sale. <laughs> That's right. But most sales training, I, I believe that if they're if you're not learning from somebody who's actually doing it, That's right. if you're not learning from somebody actually who's playing that game, you're not getting the right information. I mean, right. in the seminar world, I've paid hundreds of thousands of dollars for people to teach me how to run a seminar, how to run a program, how to run a coaching program. And I went to the top, I said, okay, how much is it gonna cost me for me to shadow you? I wanna shadow you, I wanna learn from you because you're not a teacher, you're a doer. Right, You know, right. Same, I think the same thing for us in the real estate game, is like we're not, I mean, my training with my, my people always just, just follow me, get in the car, let me show you how I look at deals, let me show you how to structure deals, let me show you how to close deals. That's right. That's right. And I think that's like, that's the difference between a, an order taker and a closer is having uh, the desire to train. One important point to bring up is that the best closers 
are not the best trainers. The best closers Absolutely right, man. are not the best trainers. And I think that the three key elements, okay, that make a good successful training to an individual are number one, identifying a mentor, meaning somebody that you're gonna shadow, that you are gonna let that person show and tell you the business. And then the second thing is you need to be in a constant learning attitude mood. You have to be open. You have, you to, have be to be open. open, man. You have to be open because there's no room for ego. I mean, That's I have right. so many guys that have come work for me in the past and I tell them, man, you got to check that ego because it's here. It's not about like, you know more, I know more. It's just about, can you learn from the experience? That's right. Every deal is different. It is different. And if I have an ego and you have an ego and then we're like, no, I could have done this better. You're like, we, we always going to lose. We're in the business of personalities, all. And every deal is different because every person is different. That's why the deal is different. And that's the beautiful part. I mean, that's why I never get bored on sales. That's, that's why right. I love teaching sales. You know, we, we've done very well in the multiple businesses that, that we have. And in the core is always the, the hunch. Yep. Is the sales. And I think that if that's you, what sales are all about in the end, right? I mean, and that's what that's hunting. What, there are so many people out there that think that a website is going to make the money. I'm, I'm sure a website is going to make the money. I'm sure it, for the right industry but most industries are, are driven by sales that's right but if you don't know how to hunch if you don't know how to close a deal if you don't know how to put your value in the first five minutes in front of your clients to make that client say okay i need this or i'm interested or let's have a dip deeper conversation you're losing that's right you're losing so the three elements that i will bring uh, to the table now to kind of give the audience okay the basic good rules to be trained properly and to work properly in real estate will be identifying a mentor who will be doing the job with you. You shadow this person, okay? Show and tell, right? Mm -hmm. Listen, but not just listen to your mentor. Listen to the clients. Listen to the clients answering questions that you will be asking, okay? And then obviously the constant um, training the constant learning path that you need to, to have. You have to constantly. I mean, at, at our stage, I mean, you go to, to trainings, you yes. go to seminars. I mean, yes. you are part of, of different groups. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm always hungry to learn. Yes. And I think that's where people have this misconception that a closer is born. Like, a closer no. is born. A cl closer is made. Is made. And I want to I wanna close with this quick story that, that's funny. I think I, every time I, we have a, we get together, we talk about this one closing. Remember, you, you set me up with a guy that we closed uh, a deal and he uh, gave me half of the deposit for a property in Florida, That's a piece right. of land, right? That's right. That's and then right. he told me the next day to come by his house to collect the other half of the check for the deposit, right? Yes. And I went to his house and the wife said he wasn't there. And I said, okay. But his car was outside. Uh, no, that day he wasn't there. So I called you and I called you and I said, Juan Carlos, like this, this guy says he's not there. And you told me, check in the garage to see if his car is there. Oh, that's right. And then you told me, like, check. I said, I check. I said, yeah, his car is here. He says, go back and ask to see if you go and sit down and wait for him. So I went back and knocked on the door and I said, can I wait for him? And, you know, I, and I drove all the way over here. Can I just sit down? I was, I was in my 20s, man. It was like one of our first closings. <laughs> and then he says, sure, yeah, sure. He's not here, but I don't know how long he's, he's going to stay. But I have all the time. Don't worry. So I sit in their living room and I was having the conversation i noticed that something was off from her because she was very nervous she let me in but she was nervous well i don't know my husband's not gonna be here for a while this and that and then I, all of a sudden i realized like if the car's in the driveway he That's must be in the house he, right so it was a small apartment it wasn't a he big was apartment from you. <laughs> and i know he's hiding that guy yeah, is hiding he so was like, hiding I, I said can i use the bathroom and, and i thought like maybe he's in the bathroom and i went to the bathroom he wasn't there but when i came out of the bathroom i saw him coming out of a closet i know I, I saw him coming out of a closet. Never forget that. So he came out of the closet and, and he, he gave was so the other half of the, he the other half of the check and we closed that deal. <laughs> and I think that if, if if people are listening to this, like closures are made by experiences, man. That's like right. I didn't know what I was doing. It was a persistent. I, he ended up buying the property and after three, four years, he bought many properties because he made so much money from the equity. But if I didn't close them, and I think the last thing I'll, I'll add to this podcast for people to understand what a closure is, a closer is not just a guy that's forcing people to give him money. I think that's a sales guy. That's 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 a job. Yes. A closer has always the best intentions for his client. I, the value proposition role. The value proposition. You have to match up the value proposition of your product, whatever you sell, with the cost of it. The moment that is not a match, you got people changing their mind. You got people hiding from you. Etc. You have to always check on your value proposition. If your value is higher 
than the price that then, you're asking, then, then it's always going to be a win. It's always going to be a win. You're going you're gonna to make many, many sales That's, quickly. And you're going to become a closer. <laughs> so last thing to close is like never sell something that you don't believe in. That's right. Never sell something you don't That's believe right. in. You got to be, to become a closer, you got to believe in what you sell. You have to have the right intention Most for definitely. the client. You have to be persistent. You got to listen. What else? You got to listen. You have to shadow your mentor and show and tell. That's it. Show and tell. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and it brought you value. I want you to comment below and let us know what is the biggest insight that you got from listening to this interview? What's the biggest insight that you're learning from being a closer? What needs to happen for you to become a closer? So be in the lookout for the next video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you get the notification the next time that we upload a new video or the new podcast or a new episode. Again, it's not just about sales, but how to become a closer. Until next time, learn it, live it, experience it. Love life.